Hello and welcome to another video. Today I am going to show you how I've removed the Prongron from my car. Um, you can also call it a subframe, I usually call it a subframe myself. But uh, apparently it says Prongron on a manual if I remember it correctly. Uh, so yeah, that's the part. It's already out. It's a lot easier to actually record this once you have the part in your hand. But yeah, so uh, this should be a short video today. Um, so yeah, let's just get started with that. And here I am starting from uh, the front side of the prongron. Uh, there are three bolts, one on each side of the prongron and then one in the middle on the top. So I don't think you'll be able to see the one here on the top. You'll just have to trust me that there's something in there. And then there's two in here on the sides. And then there's this one here that I'm not sure what's the name of this uh, shark absorber looking thingy but that also has to come out so I'm gonna start with these four ones on the front and then effectively the front of the prongeron is okay to come out and uh, after that we can move on to the big bolts at the rear <coughs> As far as the prongeron is concerned, that's all I need to do to free up the front. Now, of course, nothing is going to move because the, the big bolts are on the back. So, we'll move on to the big bolts at the back now. Okay, and here we're looking at the rear at the car. Now, the rear, well, the rear of the prongeron. Or subframe. I call it subframe most of the time, but I've seen someone calling it prongeron recently, so I'm using that word as well. Um, this is the passenger side here, uh, in case you're seeing stuff mirrored or whatever. Um, and there's uh, four, four, no, five bolts. There's five bolts here, and uh, some of these are um, captive nuts, or they bolt onto the chassis, and some of them have nuts on uh, the other side. So, I, I don't know which one does what, and maybe the, the book says it, but the technique here is really simple. On the bottom side, you, you just use your big boy um, impact gun, you know, and you, you undo them. And uh, the opposite side, they are also either 17 or 19 size. Um, <clears throat> and all you have to do is just make sure that you feel with your hand if there's a nut or not and then if you find that there's a nut or not you then you know access it in whichever way you can and it's it can be a bit tricky to get there so what i usually use is the the flexible head ratcheting spanners this makes life a lot easier because once you got it there you know it's it's just just a lot easier to slot your your spanner there because you don't need to have it at the same angle as the the nut it's probably one of those scenarios where you would use what people call a crow's foot but um, i don't have crow's foot and uh, my ratcheting spanners work great for this why am i being so stupid Now after you remove all of these, so those two are captive nuts the, and the, these three have nuts on the other side. Right, and here we are on the driver's side. This is the same thing. Uh, we have one bolt here that is actually pointed downwards. 
And that's because the prongeron is not held in on the other side of the bolt, it's only held on the bottom side. So we don't need to remove that bolt, all we have to do is take the nut out and then slide down the prongeron. So on the opposite side, <coughs> I was a bit confused by to why, why this bolt was in the opposite direction, but I figured it out now. So um, the job is just simple, get access to the back of these and uh, make sure they can't spin, which is a tricky job, but it's not impossible. And uh, yeah, let's just get on with it. Right, so here we are at the back side on the driver's side, and uh, the access to, to the nuts at the back of these, it's uh, extremely difficult to get to. So what I found in the past is that uh, the easiest way to get my uh, flexible ratchet on there, flexible head uh, socket, is to reach from this side and then put my arm around behind, from above, <laughs> so it goes from underneath to above over the, um, the drive shaft, and then with my fingers I can actually guide myself or well the the spanner to to actually sit at the at the nut and you can see that it's already spinning and everything so so this is the technique um that works for me and uh, you know your mileage may vary you just need to contort your fingers a little bit more in order to get things there. But there it is. You can see it's spinning now. <coughs> now, <coughs> my CV boot is split, so I got loads of grease over there everywhere. Um, not very good for uh, making videos, but that's the reality of having a car, so you just gotta accept that. <sighs> and these two are uh, bolted onto the chassis, so I don't need to worry about nuts or anything, they just need to come out. So I'm going to, <coughs> right now, the prongeron is held just by the press fitting of it. I'm going to move the camera further back and then just gently pull it down. And uh, that's it. Um, we're pretty close to, to having this out now. So <laughs> I've put the camera a little bit further away. I'm just getting some gloves. I'm a bit tired of getting my hands full of um, oil from that CV boot, so I'm just going to put gloves on this one. Um, but yeah, I need to take that nut out, that bolt out, and then just gently let the prongeron come down. Now the prongeron is a little bit heavy, but it's not a very heavy um, part, so I'm not really worried about it falling on top of me. Uh, And here we have the prongeron out, or the subframe, out of the car.
and now you can get to see a lot of things a lot easier around here particularly getting to the alternator which I can't see because it's too dark but it's around here and most importantly clean a lot of this gunk because uh, I'm just disgusted by that.